All right, here's one for the books. It's another long one, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to read the first portion, and I'm going to put the link in the description so you guys can actually go and read it for yourself. Maybe if I... <laughs> If there's enough questions, I might just go ahead and, and uh, mark up the whole thing and so that you may or may not have to. But here we go. This is from uh, MIT Technology Review. Your next doctor's appointment might be with an AI. A new way of chatbots are replacing physicians and providing frontline medical advice. But are they as good as the real thing? My stomach is killing me. I'm sorry to hear that, says a female voice. Are you happy to answer a few questions? And so the consultation begins. Where's the pain? How bad is it? Does it come and go? There's some deliberation before you get an opinion. This sounds like dyspepsia to me. Dyspepsia is doctor speak for indigestion. Doctor speak, maybe, but it's not a doctor speaking. A female voice be belongs to Babylon, part of a wave of new AI apps designed to relieve your doctor of needless paperwork and office visits and reduce the time you have to wait for medical advice. If you're feeling unwell, instead of calling a doctor, you use your phone to chat with an AI. This idea makes seeking advice about a medical condition as simple as Googling your symptoms, but with many more benefits. Unlike self-diagnosis online, these apps, mm, I don't know that. like self-diagnosis online, these apps lead you through a clinical grade triage process. They'll tell you if your symptoms need urgent care or if you can treat yourself with bed rest and ibuprofen. The tech is built on a grab bag of AI techniques, language processing to allow users to describe the symptoms in a casual way, expert systems to mine huge medical databases machine learning to string together correlations between symptom and condition. Babylon Health, a London-based digital first healthcare provider, has a mission statement it likes to share in a big, bold font. To put accessible and affordable health service in the hands of every person on earth. The best way to do this, says the company's founder, Ali Parsa, is to stop people from needing to see a doctor. When in doubt, the apps will always recommend seeking a second human opinion. But by placing themselves between us and medical professionals, they shift the front line of healthcare. When the Babylon Health app started giving advice on ways to self-treat, half the company's patients stopped asking for an appointment, realizing they didn't need one. Babylon is not the only app of its kind. Others include Ada, your MD, and Dr. AI, but Babylon is the front runner because it's integrated with the UK's National Health Service, showing how such tech could change the way health services are run and paid for. Last year, Babylon started a trial with Hospital Trust in London, which calls to the NHS's non-emergency 111 advice line are handled partly by Babylon's AI. Callers are asked if they want to wait for a human to pick up or download the Babylon-powered NHS Online 111 app instead. Around 40,000 people have already opted for the app. Between late January and early October 2017, 40% of those who used the app were directed to self-treatment options rather than a doctor. Around three times the proportion of people who spoke to a human operator. But both the AI and the humans staffing the phone line told the same proportion of people to seek emergency care, 21%. When the app started giving advice on ways to self-treat, half the patients stopped asking for an appointment, realizing that they didn't need one. Now, Babylon has co-launched the UK's first digital doctor's practice called GP at Hand. People in London can register with the service as they would with their local doctor, but instead of waiting for an appointment slot and taking time off work to see a physician in person, patients can either chat with the app or talk to a GP at hand doctor on a video link. And in many cases, the call isn't needed. The human doctor becomes your last re resort rather than your first. 40,000 people in London have used the Babylon app. GP at hand has proved popular with some 50,000 people registered in the first few months. 
among them Matt Hancock, the UK health minister. Babylon now wants to expand across the UK. The service is also available in Rwanda, where 20% of the adult population has already signed up. According to Mobasher Butt, a doctor and a member of Babylon's founding team, and it's setting up services in Canada with plans to do the same in the U.S., Middle East, and China. All right. Now, after speaking to um, Mel Wolf, who is in the um, health insurance services business, uh, he said something to me very, very interesting a couple of years ago when we were talking about uh, getting rid of the health insurance, Obamacare, right? He says the vast majority of costs in health insurance and even health costs is people going to urgent care or people who didn't need to go into the hospital going into the hospital for minor things like coughs or belly aches and stuff like that. He said that you could cut off about 60% of uh, visits by just... Uh, or cost of health care just by preventing people that didn't know, need to go see a doctor from actually doing so. And I said that eventually they were going to incorporate um, this kind of system where you have not, where you have a series of AIs, um, nurse practitioners, and doctors online first before you ever have to go into a hospital. Because the biggest reason that you need... Um, hospital rooms and all that and hospital examination rooms is because what people need to go in and see a doctor or go in and ask questions. If you can prevent 40% or half those people from going in, you can reduce the size of hospitals and staff. And I said years ago that if you completely revolutionize healthcare with uh, outsourcing technology, you probably can reduce healthcare by, I said, by at least 80% at least 80%, if not more, if not a little bit more. So I'm not shocked that these AI systems are being incorporated. They're already here. They've already basically been tested, and they've been tested on some of the most difficult uh, cases like cancer, uh, like um, other ailments, and they've proved it as good or sometimes better than doctors. So like I said, a uh, Boys and girls, this stuff is not only coming, um, we're probably at the elbow of the singularity. I'm beginning to feel that way. There's other um, articles I'm going to bring out about this, but we're probably at the elbow of the singularity. So this stuff will accelerate. This stuff will accelerate. So hang on, Dorothy. Kansas is going bye bye. Very quickly. And the shock that it's going to cause, that's going to cause in a society will be phenomenal. It'll be something that we've never seen before. Taking 8 billion people through this kind of rapid change, things are going to break. There's going to be good things. I think good things like this. And there's going to be downsides because that means the people that have been doing this and being in that profession are going to start losing their jobs because a hospital doesn't just have doctors and nurses it also has technicians it has uh people that work in the cafeteria people that do cleanup because hospitals has to be have to be cleaned if you downsize that you downsize everybody not only the doctors and nurses but also the support staff that maintain the hospitals and stuff like that so it's going to be a ripple effect but in the meantime that's all I got for this one. Uh, log this in your database because more of this will be coming. I got tons of articles like this talking about the medical profession. And the medical profession has not really been automated. It's, it's been a very person-to-person a -person, um, business for as long as it's been around. And that's getting ready to change very rapidly. But folks, that's all I got for this one. This is BGS out and I will see you guys on the next one.